So, hello everyone, I'm Pascal and I'm presenting my survey article on efficient frequent subgraph mining and transactional databases. Um, so, what is this all about? Uh, it's obviously about graphs and just uh, to briefly mention graphs, um, as you might know, are a very general way of describing things that happen in the real life uh, whenever objects somehow are connected to other objects. So, uh, for example, you can have a here um, co-authorship network, like from me two years ago, roughly, um, where um, the objects that might be connected are persons, and they are connected in this case here if they wrote a paper together at some point, right? Uh, another way that that's also very important in the uh, context of frequent subgraph mining, because it's a, it's an application that, that more or less started all this. Um, is chemical molecules where um, you have um, little atoms that bond together to form these larger molecules and you can describe these molecules as graphs. And um, so um, basically there are lot, lots of other ways of, of um, having, having data that's well basically is easily described in forms of graphs but not necessarily easy in, in other notions of traditionally uh, tabular data, for example. Um, so once we have these graphs, it's uh, in our field, of course, directly the next question is how we can learn from, these, uh, from this data in this form, right? And um, as I mentioned, um, graphs and, and tabular data are somewhat, um, well, not easy to, to be moved one into the other. And um, so we basically, have a lots of methods um, that not directly work on graphs. So basically, um, you need to transform these or, or find anything um, that that works with graphs. And uh, one way of doing this would be um, using similarity-based methods, where you argue that, that objects that are close by, in this case, graphs that are somehow well similar, behave similarly with, with respect to the thing that you want to predict. Example, right? But then again, the question is what does close by mean if the objects are graphs? Um, another way of, of learning from graphs, so to say, is identification of relevant patterns um, that you could use for exploratory further analysis or for defining similarities based on, on common um, structures that are relevant to you. Um, and here, then the question would be, what is a pattern? What exactly would you consider to be a pattern? And uh, what is the notion of relevancy that you want to uh, consider? Um, frequent subgraph mining or frequent subgraphs in this case um, are a notion of relevant patterns that you can use um, for these two tasks before and are defined as follows. So let's say you have a database of graphs which are called transaction in this case, hence the name transactional databases. Um, and um, now you want to find the frequent subgraphs. And this is a reasonable choice, um, for example, to define similarities. And um, in detail, this is defined as um, given a graph database G, uh, D in this case, and an integer threshold, um, we are tasked to list all the connected graphs that are subgraph isomorphic to at least T graphs in D. Um, subgraph isomorphism such, just that we're on the same page, um, is a mapping from the vertices of, of the pattern graph, G1 here in this case, to um, the vertices of the transaction graph, G2, such that whenever there is an edge in G1 between two vertices, there must be an edge between the images of these vertices in G2. This is the, the most natural or intuitive notion, at least for me, to define whether a pattern graph is contained in a larger graph. Um, this problem is obviously MP hard. Um, so um, this makes our life a bit difficult here. Um, nonetheless, um, there are lots of exact algorithms solving um, the frequent connected subgraph mining problem on the lower part here you see lots of them um, and uh, we are also looking uh, at the special case when you're interested in only listing the patterns that are trees 
Um, and as you see here, um, as this is a survey article, you see these methods, but uh, I won't go into the details of, of um, what they're actually, actually doing. Um, as you see, there are lots of methods that, that solve this. And now um, you're wondering, right, we are in 2020 in a conference, why are you seeing a survey article here um, about a problem that was solved 10 years ago um, or even 15 years ago, let's say. Um, well, all these methods enumerate a full set of frequent subgraphs. Um, what's this all about? And the answer lies in the question that I want to like ask you rhetorically. So let's say um, an acquaintance of yours has 200 graphs and they are not too large, 10 to 30 vertices each, 30 to 120 edges each, and there are some vertex labels and this guy wants to find the frequent patterns with five or more vertices in this database. Can you do it? Well, the answer is no. And um, the reason for this is actually the computational complexity of uh, this mining problem. And um, so we will be looking briefly into, into this. Um, looking into the notions of complexity um, that might be useful for listing problems and uh, ask whether there is any hope for the exact mining and give a revisit to the exact algorithms and their efficiencies and then look at some more current inexact solutions that um, might hopefully convince you that there is still um, progress in this area and there's also still some questions that need to be addressed in my opinion. Um, so, recall the frequent connected subgraph finding problem is um, this database and you want to list all the graphs that are subgraph isomorphic to at least t graphs in this database. Uh, subgraph isomorphism is NP-hard, but, um, well, there's more to it um, because uh, what you are dealing here with is a listing problem, right? You want to you don't want to answer a yes/no question, but you want to return a list of objects um, that that fulfill your requirements. And um, so, if you want to define efficiency notions for such problems, uh, you have to first think about the output that you're giving, right? Um, and the thing here is, um, there might be an exponential number of frequent patterns in your database depending on the database and your frequency threshold. So we would need an output dependent bound that somehow incorporates um, the output size into the efficiency notion. Otherwise you can just answer, okay, no, there is no way of doing this efficiently because we need exponential time to output an exponential number of patterns. So um, the most general way of, of defining this would be output polynomial time uh, where um, we uh, say our algorithm is efficient if uh, it finishes in a time that is polynomial in the input size and the output size. So basically what this allows is um, you basically compute, 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 and at the end um, you output all the patterns that you found. So main, meaning basically you might have an exponential time in the beginning where nothing happens, and um, then in the end you get all the results at once. Um, this is obviously not a very interesting notion from a practical point of view, but nonetheless, um, it's, it's a well traditional way of defining at least some notion of uh, efficiency, right? Um, more in my eyes practical is the definition of polynomial delay, where you bound the time between finding consecutive patterns by a polynomial in the input size. So basically meaning you start your algorithm after a polynomial time in the input size, you get the first results and then so on after a polynomial time again, you get the second result and so on and so on and so on. So this is, this is a useful notion, I would say, um, for the definition uh, of, of efficiency here. Um, but there's also something in between the two, uh, incremental polynomial time, which I'm not going too much into detail here. You can look at it in the paper. So um, 
Now let's go to the frequent connected subgraph mining and the exact algorithms again that, that you saw previously, right? I mean, there exists software to, to solve um, the frequent connected subgraph mining problem, FSG, G, Stan, Gaston, lots of um, several other papers um, that provide uh, implementations for this as well. Um, but if you look into the experimental results that they, that they show, um, you might notice that they, they typically uh, investigate chemical graph databases. And uh, the, the thing there is that basically these chemical graphs only have um, very few additional edges on average, like three, four, five more edges than vertices on average. Um, and hence I would call them very simple in a way. And um, once you go beyond, beyond these very simple graphs, um, the runtime and space requirements explode. So here on the right, you see um, a plot on the x-axis. Um, we increase the density of the graphs. Um, and the database that we're considering here is 50 graphs with roughly 50 vertices each. And then basically we uh, have um, here um, 50 edges each on, next, uh, on average and then this goes up here to 100 edges on average and to 250 edges on average. And on the y-axis, you see the time that, that um, different algorithms here require to, to solve this database. And then the thing is basically that for uh, 50 vertices and 100 um, edges on average, this thing, so these algorithms tend to not finish in the day, which is sad. Right, because it's a rather small database and we're not able to, to solve this. Um, and the reason for this is that the frequent connected subgraph mining problem is actually computationally intractable, it has to do with um, the intractability of the subgraph isomorphism algorithm, obviously. Um, and uh, these existing software somehow implicitly use properties of the graph databases, and in particular, that these graph databases are rather simple. Um, so basically, um, the, stand, the point of 2010, um, and also the point right now in 2020, is that there is no system that can reliably mine all the frequent subgraphs, or even all the frequent subtrees, in arbitrary graph databases, also known to medium sized graphs. So, this is a problem if you have data and you just want to have the frequent graphs, obviously, right? Um, so, and looking at the theoretical side of this, this is the picture that I showed you again uh, already. Um, looking at um, the, um, the efficiency notions um, of these algorithms, um, what you can see is that basically um, none or almost none of, of the algorithms that were published until 2010 and that were exact um, are actually efficient in the sense that they have polynomial delay, incremental polynomial time, or even polynomial output time, right? Uh, the only two methods that, that have this um, are free tree miner uh, from 2003 and uh, an algorithm without a name from 2010. Um, but they come with their own problems, namely free tree miner only works for forest transactions. So you can only put graph databases in that consists of trees basically or forests. And uh, the other one was not implemented. Actually it has been tried, but it's not trivial and it was basically um, stopped uh, this endeavor. So, um, all the other methods that you see here are um, so action exponential in the output size in the worst case, meaning basically exponential in an exponential set in the size of the input. So it's doubly exponential, um, so, which is something that you really don't want, right? In the worst case, um, resulting in the problems that you saw before uh, in the runtimes, right? Um, some ways of dealing with this has, have been proposed in the last uh, few years. Um, and this is where the, the, the second 10 years basically come in right now. Um, one way uh, would be to, well, decrease the complexity of the database by making it simpler or smaller. Um, 
changing the embedding operator from subgraph isomorphism to something that might be easier to compute um, or restricting the pattern language to something that is easier to handle, for example, only to trees and um, then allowing a certain error in the, in the set of patterns. Either you find too many or you find too little. Um, and, and various methods basically do various combinations of the following aspects to um, achieve better runtime results. And um, briefly looking at these, um, we uh, see on the bottom from 2009 to 2020, there has been, has been some work um, for the frequent subgraph mining um, part of things. It doesn't look too good in the um, computational um, size, but, but, they, um, but these methods are basically in, in practice working a bit better than, um, than the original algorithms on more complex data. Um, this one does, for example, a, um, a compression of the database uh, by re removing uh, certain edges from the original graphs to, to make the problem more tractable uh, in practice. And nonetheless, the uh, frequent subgraph mining algorithms are not able to basically guarantee polynomial delay or increment the polynomial time. But if you're looking at the frequent subtree mining um, side of things, it looks much, looks much better. Uh, there have been uh, recent works that basically by restricting um, the patterns that we find to trees um, are able in arbitrary graph databases to find at least the trees with a certain error. Um, and um, with this, um, I'm sorry that I cannot give more details in this short presentation, obviously. Uh, please have a look into the paper if you are interested in, uh, in more details on why um, efficiency or inefficiencies are basically the case for these methods. Um, in conclusion, um, please take home the following points, right? A frequent subtree, subtree and subgraph mining is an inherently difficult problem. Um, it's in general not possible to do this in output polynomial time, meaning it's generally not possible to do this efficiently. Um, Exact methods nonetheless exist for a long time, but um, due to the complexity issues above, um, they only work on very simple graph databases. Um, so basically, in the worst case, they use output exponential time and space, uh, which is a problem once you leave, for example, the domain of chemical graphs. Um, but relaxations of the problem results in efficient algorithms that can guarantee polynomial delay um, by trading off, uh, well, the completeness in the sense of that you can actually at the moment only find um, tree patterns and um, by being inexact in a way of one-sided error so that you either find too little or too many of the, of the patterns in comparison to the exact result. Um, so, and as an outlook, uh, why I think it's, it's important to still consider this, this area and to do research in this area is, um, well, one of the questions would be, um, can we um, benefit from both aspects, right? And can we combine the exact algorithms uh, up to the point where they stop being, um, well, practically feasible? and switch then over to uh, the inexact algorithms. That this, this should be possible, I think. Um, and um, as a more theoretical question, a more general question is, can we basically use the insights that we have for the inexact efficient frequent tree mining to um, um, find patterns that are more general and contain some cycles, for example. And uh, with this, I want to stop my um, presentation and I would be happy to uh, start a discussion about this. Thank you.